Cool. Yep, it's your boy Cook. You know what it is. Some more music podcast. We back for another Boom Sound collab. Meet the artist segment. What's happening, everybody? Now I got a very special guest today. First of all, shout out Lavelle. Now I got a very special guest by the name of Brass. What's going on, brother? What's going on with you, man? How you doing? Man, I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? Man, you know how it is, man. I hey. get into it, man. Nah, I feel that. that. I feel that. I feel that. Hey, so let's start here, man. Just tell everybody, you know, introduce yourself and let everybody know where you're from and uh, what started you make it. What started you, you know, your music career, basically. All right, so, I right, everybody, you know, I'm Brass. I'm from Green Evers, North Carolina. You know, G Town, right there in Duplin County, nine one zero. Okay. Um, you know, now you know you find me mo mostly in the Charlotte area. You know that's where I'm at now. Um, and I've been in music for man, I've been writing for about thirteen years, man, for real, for real. Wow. Re really get really going on fourteen now. I've always been someone who's you know expressed his thoughts, feelings, you know, on paper or some way, shape, fashion, or form. So, you know that that goes back for me, but I. I've been actually on the mic spitting for about four or five years, about five, no, five or six years now. Okay. So, you know, just, just off the love for real. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You're getting deep in the game now. Hey, that's what happens when you really do what you <laughs> love though. Facts. Like, for real. So, so talk about like, you know, some people that you was listening to growing up, you know, that made you want to even start writing. Uh, Tupac was the big one. Mm. When I was about 12 years old, it was shortly after the Notorious movie came out. And, you know, I was looking at that like, dang, that's what rappers do? But right. then I started really getting into hip hop for real. And then that was when I, I ran into Tupac's music. And like, you know, listening to him and just thinking, you know, this dude in a matter of 25 years, he, he was a poet. He was somebody who revolutionized like the mindset of what a rapper is when presented, you know, just kind of how we looked at hip hop change with him. And and there's a lot of legends out there that I ran into. You got Eminem, you got Buster Rhymes, Big L, uh, Big Pun. Like I, the list goes on for me, but he was the one that made me say, you know, I can do more than just write raps. Mm -hmm. I can learn to be a poet too. That's real. That's real. I like that. Hey, Tupac was a whole influence, man. He was a whole yeah, generation. I'm so talk you. about uh so you you spell you spell the name brass b r a dollar sign dollar sign yeah. just talk about how you came up with that name and uh the the unique spelling uh the name itself you know I I've been brass for a long time like forever really um but like the spelling for it you know I wanted to I wanted the name to mature with me mm. so. Instead of it just being brass, like, oh, you know, brass, knuckles, you know, hard, whatever, you know, on some younger shit. Yeah. I went with be real and stay surreal as a message, not only to myself, but to, you know, people that run into me. You know, be real and stay surreal, which you got to be real with yourself. The two dollar signs are in there because money matters. Like, you got to chase that dollar. But be real is before that. Mm. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Hey, and you, you the first one to get that full explanation too. Word up! I, like, nah, word I, up. I, I like that. That makes sense because I mean, yeah, you can't get money until you. I mean, you can get money if you you're get not. Money. You cannot if you're not being real, but you're not gonna be able to keep it. You know what I'm saying? So, I like that. I like that. That make you think. I like that. I can tell you right. I fuck with that. Yeah, man. I fuck with that. Check so, out my uh, new book. <laughs> uh, and that's exactly what I'm about to ask you about next. You got a lot of ventures going on. So just uh talk about your book that you have. All right. So um in the mindset of you know 25 year old, um, and with, with all the protesting and everything that was going on, you know, in recent years, um, I wanted to just put my thoughts in, you know, in a collection. And so it just started off with, you know, a few poems here and there. And then it was like one night I remember just boom, just writing them out, writing them out. But the whole mission was, you know, I want not only people to remember these days, you know, like because there's some historical things that actually happened in there. You know, I actually talk about smelling the the tear gas and protests 
that were going on in Greensboro. I actually talked about, you know, like, you know, June, July, and August, like the hottest months in the streets when you do be hearing about a lot of like crazy street stories, homicides, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking about the stories and the things that actually go not only through my head, but I've actually seen in my life too. Um, you know, I, um, the Book of Rhymes is inspired by, you know, the song Book of Rhymes by Nas. So, you know, shout out to the OG for real. Um, one of my favorites. And, um, you know, I, and I, you know, it's titled Book of Rhymes, What I See. And this, this one, this entry right here is strictly about what I saw, what I think, and hoping that other young black men like myself pick it up and say, huh. I want to put my thoughts down. I want people to understand what I see, you know, do it intellectually. I mean, it's cool to have the strength too, you know, cause I had to have the strength to survive that stuff, but now put it out intellectually so people can, you know, remember. Yeah. I like that. How, how long did it take you to write it? So that one, it took me 13 days. Wow. Yeah. That's dope. So uh, when does it drop? What's it, or is it already out? So right now it's out on gumroad.com. I got a link for that on my Instagram, which you can follow me at the real brass. Um, yeah, just hit the link, you know, follow that, and it takes you straight to the book. Um, it's just ten dollars, you know. Hit that download it, share it, let other people know about it. Sure. Um, and just know that there are more to, you know, there are more to come. So All what right. you got planned, what you got planned as far as books, uh book wise? I got a whole series written out, man. I got six already written. Wow. Like I'm not just telling the story about what I what I thought. You know, the second one I wrote while I was in jail. Like I was take I was, and I'll tell the truth on that one, like right now, because it's gonna release soon. You no, know, like I was talking to my brothers that was in there with me, my cellmates, my and just you know, the other guys I was in general mm -hmm. pop with and whatnot. And like I was getting stories from them, but I was also talking, you know, about like my own stories too. And we were all sharing, and then I just told them, like, yo, I, I asked them, like, is it cool if I like, you know write this down like you know you inspired me to write the stories and you know the guys i talked to they were cool with it but before i left i made sure everybody got a chance to read it and you know i wrote some on the walls too like you know for people that get in there and just get down like just know you gonna see the sunlight yeah you feel me so yeah so there's there's a series man there's six of them like that that's dope hey i can't wait to read them man oh yeah man appreciate you for like sure. each one gets better absolutely so so um i as far as you know, putting out the book, you know how how are you going about that? Is like a publishing company or? So they're self published right now. Okay. Um, I do have a publishing company that I am, I'm considering working with. You know, like nothing, nothing set in stone is what I'm gonna say, but mm -hmm. they're gonna drop on the day I want them to drop. Right. Like whether I have to self publish them, um, they're gonna end up on Amazon. They're gonna end up on Etsy. Like I'm currently working on that right now. Okay. You know, like. But gum, I had I had to get it I had to get it out that I had to get out that first one because I've been sitting on that since you know twenty twenty. Wow. You know, like well, so yeah, I was like twenty four when I started writing that, and then I had just turned twenty five. So yeah. So being that you wanted to come out on a certain date, is there like a significance to the date that you want to release on? Nah, man, I just drop things when God allows it, man. Okay. Straight up. Hey, hey can't never <laughs> argue with that. I'm telling you, because <laughs> if it was up to me, it would have dropped when I finished it. Yeah, you know, but I didn't. I wasn't done going through things, and so, you know, now you know, I prayed on it. And it was like, yeah, it's time to drop it. Go ahead. Hey, that's real. That's real. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about shows you have coming up. You got a tour coming up, right? Actually, we just started. We was in L.A. Um. Oh, about two weeks ago. Oh, it was the third, yeah. the third through the fifth. Yeah. So I, yeah. I was there. Talk about that. And, uh, you know, talk about that experience when you was in LA. First time on the West Coast. Word. Uh, um, everybody know what LA, what LA known for. So, <laughs> like, I, I enjoyed myself. Like, I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed the sunlight, the beach, and all that. You know, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, headlined at a couple events. Um, Feisty Fest. Feisty Fest was a smash, you know. I'm still spreading this from east to west coast, you know. So that was my first time actually doing um this this artist event in LA. 
or in the West Coast in general. Like it's been on the East Coast, you know, several times over the last three years. So, you know, I appreciate my people out there in the West. For sure. So talk about uh, you know, since it was your first time on the West Coast, you know, being over there and performing, what was the vibe and the and you know the feedback like for you? Um, the vibe, you know what, the people are some of the, like the cool, like they they cool, man. You know, very like chill, very chill. Yeah, they chill. <laughs> like ain't nobody really pressed at all. Like if you really just looking around, like I mean, it's LA, man. Yeah, it's they LA. see it every day. They like to see it every day. Mm -hmm. That's that's it, man. So it was a vibe, man. I enjoyed it. Uh, the people that I met out there, you know, hope to meet them again. Hope to see them again soon. So is it, you know, is it kind of like your audience, you know, on the East Coast where, you know, they, they, you know, I guess re reply to the music in a better, in a, in a, you know, like how do they react to your music the same way as over here? So since we really did mostly, um, you know, S O N Y. Um, music, like the, the collective, um, they responded well. Okay, like that, they they responded well. Our names are still getting out there. You feel me? So right. it's like, you know, it was that that huh? Who are these guys kind of affect? You know, so they they was they was rocking with. Um, I feel like you know the more we push this tour, the more people gonna hear the name, the more people gonna rock with, the more people gonna you know lock in. Mm -hmm. All right, cause the name, cause the name is out there. We pushing, we doing our thing. Hey, that's the common goal. That's the common goal. So uh, let, let me ask you uh, about uh, Slum Punk. Yeah, talk, talk about that genre, like, cause I don't think I've heard that before. Yeah, and, you uh, ain't heard that before. And uh, and uh, it's, it's and I think you said the same thing about Three AM Sound. So, you know, I, yeah, just talk about Slum Punk the genre and what it means. Slum punk, man. Without four hundred forty-four hertz, there is no slum punk. First of all, mm. like you gotta have that angelic space sound. You gotta have that clearness in your in your sound when you make slum punk. Otherwise, people won't even fall into it correctly. It you can't you can't put negativity into that. You feel me? Yeah. Like <laughs> you'll try, but the song won't sound good. Um. Yes, yeah, slum punk is hip hop inspired. You know, it's like if hip hop and our generation of sounds that we've heard over our lives, and I'm talking about this current generation, you know, like the youth today, if you put them sounds together, it's not hip hop. You know, you, you get something different. Right. You get that, you get slum punk, you know, it's got, it's like got, a, yeah, you know, like I tell Uzi straight up, like you can rap, but you're not a rapper. Nah, nah, he's not a slum punk artist, bro. Absolutely, he a rock star, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and, and shoot, he he'll say he'll say he a motherfucking rock star. So yeah, he a rock star. But like me, I'm a slum punk artist. You know, like yeah, I, I can rap, but the aura I bring ain't rap. Yeah, I, and that's what and you know when listening to Three AM Sound, like first time I heard, you know, first time I ever heard, bro, was actually in person. Um, he had yeah. he was actually performing at a festival that I was at, and it was and that was the first time I ever, you know caught on to a sound and it was like I was like they said he was a rapper I was like nah he ain't no rapper does bro even know he a slum punk artist <laughs> like cause I'm, I'm thinking I'm like well I ain't I ain't been I ain't been able to spread the good gospel of slum mm -hmm. punk so like you know I'm like so maybe he don't know yet but yeah bro you got you in a whole nother lane you in a whole nother class the reason people if the world don't know you yet it's because they still on that last and you not the past you the next yeah so, you know, I, Slum Punk is inspired by people like XXX, Tentacion, RIP. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got your Travis Scott's. You got your guys who, they Shit, we call nice. them rock stars, but they really not rock stars. Like, they, they rap stars, but they Slum Punk artists. Like, what they talking about is not, it's not strict to one topic. You know, it's not, it's not what you expecting. That's why people keep calling it weird or unique or whatnot. It's different because... It is new. That's a fact. Yeah, you know, hip hop at one point wasn't nothing but a drum beat. Hey man, it's evolved, bro. You just gotta you feel you me. You gotta accept it. Let me ask now you something. <laughs> would, would you consider Lil Yachty's uh latest album? Have if you heard it, would you consider that like a slum punk 
type of type of vibe? Um, to an extent, yeah. Okay. From what I have heard, I ain't I ain't heard the whole thing, but from yeah, what I, I have heard, heard it's like, thing. yeah, it, it's like, yeah, he going that direction. He definitely, he definitely got it. You know, it's like, yeah, he, he there. I'm talking about him like he ain't no proven artist and whatnot. Nah, he's, <laughs> you feel like he a proven yeah. artist. I know he is, but you know, I'm, a, I'm gonna be a kind of sore right now. Yeah, I feel. Um, that. you know, he um, I guess, I guess the simple answer would be yeah. But like I said, with Slum Punk, it's really hard to put negativity into it. Trust me, I, I, I did not start off as no. Hey, you know, kind of, I ain't one of them niggas, but like, I can't be depressed and make that music. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's like, yeah, I, you can be depressed, happy, sad, anything with hip hop, and that's why that's why hip hop is unique. That's why I say it's hip hop inspired. But you can do that with rock, country, and all that too. But with Slum Punk, for some odd reason, this music almost is like healing music. That's why I used to call it like, man, it's angel rap. It's angel music. Mm. You know, I used to say that, and I'm like, it's not gospel, but Try to make it negative, it won't work. Hey, I like that explanation. I like oh, that. yeah, man. 444, I'm telling you. Hey, them hurts is out. powerful. It'll go on the map, man. So uh your new single, Flexing, with 803 Sheed and Hydro. Talk about the record, you know, and uh all the contributions they made to it. Hey, that song was made kind of on the fly. Like, mm. definitely, like, the hook and everything was written all in the same session. Uh, shout out my boy exactly out there in the 803. Also got a studio in Chicago as well. So y'all make sure y'all rock with exactly. Uh he's the one that made the beat. He was just, you know, flipping through some beats, played it, and it was like, whoa. Wow. And then, you know, like, and then I was just uh, free stuff. She said new credit call me, think about stuff still flexing. They gonna hit them, you know, like yeah. I started feeling it. You know how it is when you in the studio with, with you guys, whatnot, everybody, you know, how whatnot, everybody smoking and mm-hmm. just it came out like that, but like I wanted the track to be like, you know, still on like a, uh, okay, we gonna tell people to do something, you know, good here, like do the work, flex, do the work and flex, like you 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 got guys trying to flex before they got it, That's funny. like <laughs> don't flex before you got it, people, people that are watching, don't flex before you got it, you do the work, work, flex, it's a combination. Like and when you, you flex, flex, then fake it. <laughs> For sure. That's why I keep it real. For sure. So, uh, like I said before, you you in a different, you know, a bunch of different ventures, and uh, you know, coming up later this month, February twenty fifth, you got a uh, you working with Duce. For I'm actually for... not doing that event anymore. Wow. And okay. Yeah, but but there is something else going on. Um, which I, I did, I did tell you about that event. Yeah. My intent was to promote that event. Anybody watching your, my intent was to promote that event with, you know, with, with this man on this interview. Um, but stuff happens and it's cool. You know, it's cool. But next after that, we got, um, well, two things going on in April, actually. So we got the event in Washington, D.C., the Sankofa International Conference, which is about health reparations, wealth for the community. Um, as as far as, you know, other things too that's important for the community. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, um, entertainment's cool, y'all. I'm all for it, but um, we gotta remember there's a mission at hand. So, you know, I'm gonna represent that mission and you know attend that event as well. Um, I will be on the panel. I will, you know, be with my brother Elijah Devine, and um, which also. You know, the Honorable First Lady of Zimbabwe as well. She will be there, which, you know, like I said, we our goal for this event is to talk about bridging the wealth gap. Like, how can we fill that gap? How can we actually make a plan that really works? Which is which is why she is coming, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's amazing what um what people are actually doing in our country to make things better. Mm-hmm. And I'm new, I'm new to this. I'm not somebody who's been to a million conferences, a million, you know, um, meetings like, like this, but this is something that I was invited to that I would love to be a part of and I will be a part of. So, you know, that's going down um, April 8th. 
So love that, bro. I love that. Okay. Hey, gotta keep doing positive things in the community if you want the uh, the good to come to us, bro. Exactly, man. And then after that, you know, Green Greensboro, North Carolina doing a show there. And that's going on April 15th. So Sound good. got a lot going on, man. Where where is that show at? In that's gonna be at the, that's gonna be at the Four Seasons Mall, just casual. Okay. Okay. Yeah, third floor, everybody. Make sure y'all check out the third floor. And we'll be right there rocking with you. There'll be other artists opening up as well. For sure. Hey man, sounds good. So Brass, hey man, I appreciate your time, brother. So uh I'm gonna let you end off the show. You know, uh you can you can plug in some more uh, events and, and stuff that you're gonna be dealing with uh in the future. Uh future music you got coming out, tell everybody where they can listen to you, follow you, all that good stuff. All right, everybody. So tap in with me. Like I said earlier in the, in the um interview, the real brass on Instagram. You can also find me on Spotify, Apple Music, um, really any streaming platform. YouTube. You can find my music, stream that. Check out my track, Slum Punk, Only Fans. Um, check out the Rapping in Colors mixtape. Check out the newest and the latest flexing. And make sure y'all stream that on rotation. Mm -hmm. Let people know about the sound. Let people know about Slum Punk. I am the Slum King. I am the Slum Punk Father. Brass, we out. S-O-N-Y. It's the More Muse Podcast. We gone. Oh, Boom. yeah.